and SLS is going to the moon. Hey friends, it's Dan and we're taking Space by Storm. Today we're talking about NASA's Space Launch System, or more commonly known as the SLS. At 9.55 p.m. on Tuesday, August 16th, NASA rolled the SLS out of the Vehicle Assembly Building at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The rollout was delayed for about an hour due to lightning and storm activity in the area. However, the rollout commenced as soon as the weather all clear was given and the transport crawler began the 4.2 mile trip to pad 39B for SLS's first launch. SLS arrived at the pad around 7 a.m. Wednesday morning and began the process of being locked down. This rollout is the first step towards NASA and the Artemis' program's return to the moon. And to the joy of everyone in the space community, NASA has announced an official launch date for Artemis 1. The SLS is currently scheduled to lift off on Monday, August 29th. If the next few days go well, then at launch, the 5.75 million pound SLS core stage and twin solid rocket boosters will ignite with more than 2 million pounds of thrust. Battling against the pull of Earth's gravity, the SLS will move skyward, burning fuel at an enormous rate. The solid rocket boosters will detach around two minutes into flight once their fuel is used up, and the SLS's four RS-25 engines will continue to burn until the core stage tank is empty, around the eight minute mark. At this point, the SLS is almost 100 miles above the Earth and is accelerating at more than 17,500 miles per hour. The SLS's upper stage, the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage, fires its one RL-10 engine and helps propel the Orion spacecraft and the European Service Module into a translunar injection towards the moon. The actual mission is slated to last for three weeks, and during that time, NASA will be putting the Orion capsule through its paces, testing critical systems in deep space, launch several CubeSats and testing elements of the crew life support and navigation systems. Orion will also be the first capsule to communicate with Earth through the deep space network. Orion will then return to Earth where the last crucial test will be completed, testing the heat shield. Re-entry will subject the heat shield to temperatures as high as 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is half as hot as the surface of the Sun. Parachutes will then deploy, allowing Orion to splash down safely in the Pacific Ocean off the California coast. And despite the years of delays and massive cost overruns, for many of us who were not yet born during the Apollo missions, this is our first time going to the moon. And the level of excitement and anticipation grows each day as we get closer to launch. Go NASA, go SLS.